Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Small Business Resource Network's webinar series. Uh, the Small Business Resource Network, or SBRN, is a network of professionals who provide services to the small business community. Uh, we're an affiliate of the Florida Small Business Development Center at UNF. Uh, my name is Nancy Boyle, and I'm the director of the program. And um, just to kind of give you an overview, our members are accountants, business attorneys, uh, commercial lenders, commercial insurance agents, business consultants, uh, government, uh, nonprofit organizations, and a select group of corporate members. Um, and all of these folks are vetted for their experience in working with small businesses. So if you do need professional services, please visit our website at www.sbrn.org. So before we begin today's presentation, just a couple of housekeeping items. We are recording the presentation, so you will be able to review this at a later date. We're going to be throwing a lot of information at you. So when you get the link to the recording, uh, you may want to go back and, and listen to it again. Uh, during the presentation, as questions come up, please type them in the question area. And then once our speakers have finished with their presentations, then we'll uh, go to the question area and we'll address those questions. Uh, after the webinar today, you'll be receiving an email with a link to the recording, as well as an evaluation of today's webinar. And we really appreciate uh, you completing that evaluation so we get a handle on, uh, get some insight into the kind of uh, webinars we're presenting and, and the, the value and the quality of the presentation, okay? So let's begin. Uh, let me introduce our speakers. I'm going to, ladies first, start with Jessica Bush. Jessica is an elite senior district manager for Automatic Data Processing, Inc., or ADP. I think everybody knows it more as ADP. Uh, but ADP offers solutions to benefit clients concerned with recruiting employees, instant online background checks, human resource services, employee handbooks, payroll and tax filing, time and attendance, workers' compensation, health insurance, and retirement services. So kind of the full meal deal. It's not just payroll anymore. Uh, Jessica's been with ADP for 21 years. She's quite the industry leader. She's qualified for 19 President's Clubs and 14 Pinnacle Award, Awards. Her unparalleled service is reflected by having one of the best client retention rates in the nation. Uh, Jessica leverages her experience and strong local network to provide the right service and value-added solution for any company. Her approach is simple. Listen, be honest, and help. Jessica's small town Midwest rearing has given her an old school work ethic and strong sense of community. She sells by maintaining a trustworthy relationship with her clients, and this approach allows her to earn almost all of her business through referrals. So welcome, Jessica. Uh, Adam Robinson, CPA. Adam is the managing partner of Hartman, Blitch, and Gartside CPAs, <clears throat> which is a local public accounting firm that has served the Jacksonville community for over 50 years. Adam has over 30 years experience working with businesses and nonprofit organizations to provide them with professional accounting services, including audits, reviews, and tax services. Adam is a Jacksonville native who's a financial professional with real business work experience in a variety of different industries. Adam is active in the Chamber and the Small Business Resource Network, where he's held various leadership positions. He has also given accounting and tax presentations to several organizations over the years, in addition to teaching accounting, accounting classes at Florida State College and Jacksonville University. Adam went to the University of Richmond and obtained an undergraduate degree in accounting. And later, while working full time, he obtained his MBA from the University of North Florida. Go Ospreys. So let us give a nice welcome to both Jessica Bush and Adam Robinson. And I'm going off air and let you guys take over. So. OK, well, I'll get started. And I know a lot of the attendees, this has become a hot topic because I've actually had a couple of my clients call me up and say, hey, I heard that I could get $33,000 for every one of my employees. And so someone says, I've got 10 employees, that's $330,000 that just is gonna come to me, compliments of the federal government, and all I have to do is 
have a discussion with these firms that are now out um, touting how they can do that. Um, and, you know, we all say, oh, wow, we need to jump on that and, and do that. Um, so obviously, you know, typical American capitalism has gone into overdrive um, and discussing this new program. Unfortunately, there's a variety of conditions. It's sort of like listening to the radio and you hear how someone owed the IRS $100,000 and they they only had to pay 50 bucks when they were done because they went to you know some tax service. And you go, boy, it sometimes sounds too good to be true. Um, there is a program uh, under the, it's called the, uh, the employer retention tax credit, there was a 2020 version and there was a 2021 version. So let's just sort of talk and say, well, how do we get to this $33,000 that I can claim for each of my employees? Back in 2020, usually it sort of happened in the second half of the year because the PPP loans were the first things that were really big. And then then there was this other program that was, if you didn't get a PPP loan, you could get this employer retention tax credit or employee retention tax credit. So the idea was you could get a credit equal to 50% of the first $10,000 in wages that you paid your employees. So the idea was you pay an, you know, an employee $10,000, you get a $5,000 tax credit that you use to offset your payroll taxes that you would normally owe. In addition, if you exceeded that amount, you would actually get a refund from the IRS and they would actually send it to you or you could apply it to future tax payments that you'd have to make for payroll tax payments. So that's how we come up with the five, okay? So pay someone $10,000 you'll in wages and you get a $5,000 credit. And you would apply, the way you would get this credit is by really handling it on your 941. But I'll let Jessica talk the details of how that works. But let's just sort of walk. So there's the 5,000, that applies to 2020. 2021, they did a, an amendment, a tax act that then said, you can get the same uh, employee retention tax credit. Now it's going to be 10,000 per quarter, not just 10,000 in total. Additionally, instead of it being 50%, it would be 70%. So if you paid an employee $10,000 in the first quarter of 2021, you could get a credit of $7,000. The initial act only had it going the first quarter and the second quarter of 2021. Then they amended it and had it go through the entire year of 2021. So you could have for every employee, you could get a $7,000 tax credit quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. Four times seven is 28,000 plus the 5,000 from 2020 we get to this magical number of $33,000 in tax credits. So if you've heard that on the, you know, people talking about that, I've had a couple of my clients have come to me telling me about that. Uh, and I said, you know, it's there. Now you're really not going to get all of that money until the end of the fourth quarter in 2021. Uh, but it is out there and, and some companies, uh, you know, these companies have just shown up, you know, to say, here's how you can do that. Um, we've always been able to amend returns that we were doing, them, and we were actually providing the credits to some of our clients last year when it was under the, t the old rules of the 10,000 with the $5,000 payment. However, you can go back, if you had not done it last year, you could amend the 2020 returns to get the credit. Um, you say, okay, well, this is great. So why isn't everybody doing this? Or why didn't we know about this? And why didn't my CPA tell me about it? Or my, even my payroll provider, since they should know all this, why, why wasn't I told about these credits last year? I mean, you told me, I just mentioned that we were doing them in the third quarter, you know, of last year. 
Well, last year, the rule was if you had a PPP loan, you could not take this employee retention tax credit. And that was the rule. A lot of people got PPP loans. And that um, so that was the original rule. There were some of my clients, though, that did not take a PPP loan for a variety of reasons, and they were eligible. The other thing is you had to have one of the two things occur, and this is an important condition, in addition, not only the PPP loan. Last year, or in those quarters that you're claiming, you either had to have, for 2020s, had a 50% reduction in revenue compared to 2019. 50 percent or you had to be during those periods subject to a full or partial government imposed shutdown okay so those were the two conditions one of those two conditions you know either a revenue reduction of 50 percent or being impaired your business being impaired by having this government shutdown for 2020, I think we can easily say, even here in Florida, even here in Jacksonville, that would apply, that you could say, we were shut down, our business was impaired um, for 2020. So a lot of our clients, you know, and they didn't have to pass the 50% revenue rule, because some people said, I'm in business for a certain degree, and I could do that. So we could always use that. Those same rules apply for 2021 with one difference. Instead of it being a 50% reduction in revenue, it's only a 20% revenue. So that sort of opens it up. So if you've had, and the way the IRS says it is they use, if your revenue is less than 80% of the prior year. So it's sort of an odd way to say it, but it's really if you have a 20% reduction in revenue. So those are the conditions. Some of the clients, you have to say, well, I didn't necessarily have, especially I've had some, if you didn't have a 20% reduction in revenue and you're comparing, say, your 2021 first quarter, um, you don't even have to compare it to 2020 because that could have been a bad quarter or especially when you get into the second quarter of 2020 you can compare it back to 2019 so there are some different options so you just don't have to be comparing you know 2021 you might be doing better than you were obviously doing in the second quarter of 2020 but nowhere near where you were in 2019 so it gets a little complicated and you have to look across the year 2019 2020 or 2021 so the important thing, though, is, you know, the, the real money is in the 2021. That's where you're getting, you know, the 7,000 per employee per quarter. The issue of you being shut down by the government and not able to fully operate for 2021 is one of your conditions or to have a 20% reduction in revenue. If you didn't have the 20% reduction in revenue, because let's face it, it's Florida and, and North Florida, you know, where most, I assume most of the callers are, we've been open. So if, for you to say that I cannot, that I was shut down, but my revenue was, is actually greater than it was in 20. 19 or only off five percent i think you're going to be challenged to take this credit because a lot of people say you know they were working full-time there were no restrictions on some clients if you were a restaurant you were still had capacity issues and you were shut down to a certain degree with some restaurants if you just because you say oh yeah there was a government shutdown but that really occurred that's in 20 20 you have to say did the government shutdown occur in this quarter so if you're claiming the 2021 tax credit for the first quarter you have to say was my revenue less than 20 percent or was i was i impaired from doing business because of a government imposed shutdown so jessica do you recall when the 
when more or less they opened the city up or the state, I, I really think it was in the fall, the last quarter of 2020. Yeah, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. So, like because if we shut down in March 2020, right. then it was probably, yep. Okay. In the so, so that's, a, that's a, an important thing to see, to understand. So as we're looking at 2021 and we're moving into this year to say, do we have the, if you had the 20% revenue reduction, you're fine, you're golden. Okay. So when I went back and I talked to, you know, we'll shift to say, here's another condition. You know, I talked about how if you had a PPP loan last year, you were first ineligible for this tax credit. They changed the rules and said, if you get a PPP loan, you were even one last year, or if you came and got a PPP loan in, in round two of this year, you're eligible, you know, you, you can say you can do that. You have to show though um, that the wages that are quote paid for by the PPP loan, you cannot use those same wages to take the tax credit on, okay? Since the PPP loan usually only covers two and a half um, months or about 10 weeks of payroll, that's possible to do. The question that you're gonna have is saying, especially if we're in the first and second quarter of 2021, taking these credits, and then you went and got a PPP loan for round two, you really have to be careful that you don't say, well, here's my PPP loan. It covered these wages in the second quarter, the first and second quarter of 2021. And then you're trying to use, you can't use those same wages for the uh, this tax credit, this employee retention tax credit. You'd have to have wages either later. And then you may say, well, my wages later aren't necessarily 20% below you know, 2019 because my revenue's recovering. So we have a, a little bit of a challenge there between them. So it's important to sort of look at the numbers and say, okay, does this really work? I have a the feeling that what's going to happen is we hit the third and fourth quarter, a lot of clients are going to be, or people are going to be ineligible because they're not going to have the 20% reduction in revenue compared to 2019 because as we start to recover, and then if they had a PPP loan, they, they may not be able to, to take credit because they're using the PPP loan right now to cover wages that they were um, for first and second quarter, perhaps when their revenue was lower than it was in 2019. So I've mentioned there's a few different conditions here that it's gonna, you're going to really have to be careful to say, well, can I really get all this money and these conditions? And once again, you're having to compare wages, I mean, not wages, your your revenue between last year, you know, 2019 against perhaps 2021, as well as 2020. So it's got a lot of moving parts. Fortunately, um, you know, that's where your accountant has to be there and you have to say, okay, what is my revenue numbers? And then you also have to know, uh, from the employee's side, you know, what kind of employees did I have? The Most of the clients, it's now eligible for clients under 500 or less. Um, and they can still, be, they can be working for you, not working. There were conditions historically that the employees had to be not working for you to get this tax. You had to pay them and pay them as if they weren't working to get the tax credit. That applies to companies over 500, but under the 500 employee limit, which is really most of who I deal with, this would be an eligible thing for. One other caveat as a condition, if you pay employees that were sick from COVID or taking care of somebody who had COVID, you were eligible to get a tax credit for the wages you paid them. That was just a straight up credit and, um, those wages can't be counted as you can't double dip. You can't get a, a COVID sickness wage credit as well as this employee retention tax credit. So that's in an, a broad of how the program works. 
there's conditions. And so you really have to, in summary, what was your revenue in your quarters compared 2020 back to 2019? That would make you eligible for going back to 2020. Did you have wages that weren't covered by the PPP loan? Okay, that's your 2020 year. The other thing, if you're going back to 2020, and you only get $5,000 total for employee. I got 10 employees. Hey, I'm, I'm quote eligible for 50,000. Okay, you need to make sure that those employees, you know, you're paying them in the, the property, you could get the credit. You can amend your 941s, which is your payroll returns. So let's say you come back and you go, well, I have five employees or I have 10 employees and I get the credit, you know, I, I'm eligible for 5,000 for all 10 employees. So I have a $50,000 credit. That's an exciting moment right there. You can say, okay, I'm going to amend my payroll tax returns. Well, you know, it's June 2nd right now. And a lot of businesses have probably filed their corporate return. That $50,000 credit is going to be reduction of your expenses for 2020. So the credit means your payroll expenses are going to be reduced by $50,000. So that effectively means your taxable income on your corporate return is going to go up by $50,000. So in effect, it's taxable. This is different than the pay the PPP loan. That was specifically not made taxable. So let's go to the scenario. You have already filed your corporate return. You're going to need to amend your 2020 corporate return because you've overstated expenses by $50,000. So when that happens, you're gonna to have to do that. And if you've already done your personal return, you're gonna probably have to amend that one. So that's a condition for the 2020 is that you know, you, you're going to have to amend those and most likely if you've changed if you had a fifty thousand dollar credit and let's say you're a 20 percent tax bracket you're probably going to you're going to owe ten thousand dollars on your personal tax return i know we've gotten into the weeds here but now all of a sudden you know this this credit of 33,000 starts having a lot of other conditions and it may not be as, as good as you think it is. Um, you just need to be aware of that. And so, you, you know, to be sitting there thinking you've got this credit, I know I'm the same way, I've already spent my credit and then come back and, and your CPA shows up and goes, oh, we redid your tax return and, and you only owe $10,000. And of course we filed it in April and now you owe 10,000. Um, you'll actually owe a little bit of interest and, and maybe uh, possibly a late payment on the taxes. And even if you had done your tax return, uh, your corporate and your personal return was done by the end of May, and now we're going into this amending the prior year. One of the downsides of rushing <laughs> to get your tax returns done. Um, so that's another concern with the, uh, the 2020. 2021, you're not amending anything and you sort of know what's happening and you're going to be recording as you go along. So you don't have that concern. But the 2020 one can come and be a little problematic here. So I've sort of run through that of that. I'd rather go into questions. I know there are some and I may have the answers. Things, this is a moving target. Constantly they come back with answers, but I'm going to hand it over to Jessica now. Yes. Yeah, so one of the one of the other things, Adam, that I was reading was that self-employed companies or self-employed individuals cannot qualify for this. So that's a pretty big question, you know, with a lot of our small businesses that we use. This is really only if they have employees, right? Well, right, and they would need to be employees if they were in business, if they were incorporated, and they were their own. You know, they'd be the employees of their own companies. If you're a sole proprietor or if you're a partner, like in a partnership, you don't take W-2 wages. And so you wouldn't be eligible. There has been some discussion 
and I, I saw this in a webinar and I could never validate this from the IRS or anyone else. There, there might have been a concern that even if you were an owner and you paid yourself, you know, we have lots of people, you know, they're S corporations and they pay them, you know, they're an employee just like their regular employees. And it may be you could have a, a husband, wife, both are employees, they both work in the company. And um, from what I've seen, those wages are, are eligible. There was one webinar I attended by another CPA in another country, and he took the opinion that they were not. And I have not gotten clarification whether that would be the case. I think it would be, and fairness doesn't seem to matter. In a PPP loan, owner's wages count, okay? You know, there's limits. Uh, and so I really would find it really something that owner who gets paid a W-2 would, would be disqualified, their wages would be disqualified. Now, if we go with this 2021 and you're running your business and then instantly you, you know, you're paying yourself a salary, but now you add your spouse and your three kids aged two, six, and eight on the company payroll trying to get a credit for all of them, I think that's where you're going to run into an issue. Because, um, you know, all of a sudden, if you had no wages for these people and you're like, oh, well, yeah, everyone's now on the payroll, be, you know, that's going to be a concern. So I think what I want to do is just talk about how to capture this credit. And then I want to follow that up, Adam, with who will be monitoring, babysitting, checking this to ensure that, that these numbers are correct or that these people actually qualify do we know that well you're going to have to have documentation and where it's going to come is the irs is going to be auditing and, and what's going to happen is they're going to start seeing these credits coming through on 941s and saying because most of the time what happens is you're getting money back because there's not enough payroll taxes being withheld and you'll actually get cash back so the IRS will start cutting checks back to these businesses so just like in the PPP loan there was sort of you know the IRS is there the SBA is there and the bank is involved because the you know that that was a whole different animal. Now you had three parties that that were sort of looking over your shoulder to make sure we're good with this because we don't want if it's fraudulent the bank doesn't want to be involved. You have the SBA that doesn't want to give money, and so you've got that one. And then you could still have the IRS even involved in that game. In this game is all on the IRS, but they're also going to be probably looking to say, well, in the past, this company was depositing and paying, you know, $15,000, $20,000 in payroll taxes a quarter, and now they're wanting, you know, 50, I'm, I'm now giving them 15,000 back, and they're depositing nothing, and I'm still giving them a credit. So the IRS is, you know, it's gonna be the Internal Revenue Service that's gonna be what, looking at that. Mm -hmm. Well, so the way to capture this credit for those of you who have discovered with your CPA or your accountant that you do qualify for this, um, we have, I know ADP has, but I'm sure other payroll companies have created earnings within the payroll as a specific earning column that are for these care, CARES retention wages and CARES health credit. So once you discover how much the credit is, so like Adam's saying, $10,000 per employee per quarter, then that's recorded with the payroll. That is a direct credit on the 941 payroll return. That credit will continue to carry forward for the rest of the quarter. If you put these wages on, and it's not necessarily that you have to put the credit on at the beginning or the middle or the end of the quarter, you need to have enough payroll to offset that credit otherwise you will have to get the credit from the IRS and I'm speaking in uh, 2021 from this point forward if you go back and you amend the 2020 941 you will have to file that or the, the payroll company will file that for you it's called a 941 X form and that will go to the IRS when they process it then you'll have a credit due to you 
There's also a form called a 7200 where you can fill that form out to get an advance credit of what's coming to you. Um, one of the things that we're having a difficult time with is the IRS is we're told about four to six months behind. There's a lot of documentation coming in with all the businesses. Um, and so don't spend that money until you see it. <laughs> but if you're doing it with payroll, that will be offset currently through each pay period until that credit is used. Um, so we're talking about the credits through payroll, but also don't forget that you have a health credit. So if you pay for a portion of your employee's health benefits, then you can also collect uh, a credit on that. So there's two different earnings that are specified through the payroll. Um, I don't think I had anything else to add about how to get it. The main thing is just to just make sure that you qualify for it and go through the exercise of the reduction in business that you've had and that it's just not free money willy-nilly, as Adam is saying, you know, that you just want to get this. Um, one of the other concerns that I had was that Adam was mentioning that there are third-party vendors contacting companies stating that they can do this for them for a fee. And I think I would caution you to that, as I'm sure, you know, Adam may be able to speak more to that on who these companies are and to not be careful paying for a third party vendor to calculate these for you. It's a very simple transaction through your payroll. Right. Yes. Um, and the, Jessica, I know you can say it calculates the credit. If people have PPP, got the second draw of PPP loans, is there a way to say that these payroll is PPP thus ineligible? Does, does the payroll services have a way to distinguish that these wages are PPP wages and that these are now, and if they're not PPP, then they're eligible for the credit. Have you all gotten there yet? No, no, we're actually in development right now to try to develop a calculator. Um, I think that's going to be through the payroll system. Um, right now they're trying to develop that so that you can figure out what the credit is and what you qualify for, but that hasn't come out yet. Okay. So, so this is not so, going away. So it's not something. Also, don't be afraid if you're not acting on this right now that you're going to lose out on the credit. So it's a little, it's not a little. It is easier when you're doing it in the quarter that you're ha that you're currently paying. Um, if you have to go back and amend, that's okay. But it's just easier if you capture it now. Also, Adam, there was a question about when you can capture the credit. Um, would, would there be any reason why someone would say, I qualified, you know, can I just roll it all into the second quarter since that's where we are right now? And that's been determined that you can't do that. You have to actually take the credit within the quarter of those wages. Correct. Yes. And then that's where it becomes, if you're going back to 2020, that's where you have just some, some real issues there that, you know, you're going back. And like I said, it could still be worth it. If I knew I was entitled with 10 employees with $50,000 and I knew I got it and, you know, it's going to be several hundred dollars to amend the 941s, you know, and you say, okay, that's 700 to amend the corporate return, maybe three or 400, maybe, you know, and then to amend my personal return, I may have a couple thousand dollars, then I'm going to pay tax. You know, I may pay a tax of $10,000 on that $50,000. Okay, I'm up to fifteen thousand dollars. I'll spend fifteen thousand dollars to get fifty. I mean, who wouldn't? So it may be worth it to do that. You know, so there are some, you know, that that's maybe worth it. And and the cost, you know, like I said, you'd have those costs. You need to be careful though, because some companies are using a a a percentage so they say you know well you've got this fifty thousand dollar credit and you know we'll charge you 25 percent of that you know as a contingency fee so that may so all of a sudden now you're looking and going well why okay i'm paying 25 and i may end up be paying 
and now all of a sudden the number may not be as 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 attractive as you think it is um the way we charge for it we just charge you know more or less for services and i and i, I know some of the payroll companies they have various fees to to amend returns you know there's a flat fee or there's some kind of fee for per return so that's a that, that's something you just need to be careful with, especially for 2020 and 2021 you also though even if even if there's that case down the road you know you've got these credits in effect are going to be taxable that you get so like i said you know for 2021 it's you know you, know, you get a fifty thousand dollars you know you're going to have 10 10 to fifteen thousand in taxes so out of that number that you know you know well for there you're going to get a lot you'll get more per quarter but to understand that you'll probably have a 20 percent tax cost on all of those credits so. okay okay i had to add nancy i'm thinking maybe people have some questions yeah, um, we don't have any questions uh, in the question box yet. So those of you in the audience, feel free to go ahead and type your questions. But I want to get a little clarification if it's OK. Um, so Adam, you were talking about for 2021, you need a 20% reduction in your sales revenue. Is that um, is that looked at by quarter or is that yes. over? OK? So it's by quarter. Okay, so if I have a small business and I'm I'm looking at the current quarter, we'll make this a little easier. Right. I'm looking at the current quarter, and I can already see. Well, wait a minute. I maybe this isn't the right question. Um, I'd have to look at last quarter, wouldn't I, to have a full quarter's worth of revenue figures? Right. So right now you would be looking at the first quarter. Okay. So I'm looking so. at the first first quarter and I can see that my first quarter revenues from 2021 are 20% less than first quarter of 2020. And, and so, that would be that would be likely. That would be okay. that would be a likely thing because most people's revenue really didn't start getting hit until the end of March and that was sort of the end of the first quarter. Yes. Right. Okay. The second quarter becomes if you take the second quarter that we're now in most likely for 2021, if you compare it to 2020, you're going to be up because 2020, the second quarter of 2020 was probably as low as it got because everything shut down and that's when everyone really took the hit. So then in this case, you wouldn't go against, you wouldn't compare to 2020, you would go back and compare back when things were normal in 2019. So you would look at the second quarter of 2019 and compare it to the second quarter of 2021. And there are some caveats that you... The, the years don't have to be consecutive then? They, what they're saying is they want you to, what you really want to do is you're comparing your revenue change back to when pre-pandemic is what they're trying to, to allow you to do. Because most likely people's second 2020 revenue is going to be higher than it was in 2020, but lower than it was in 19. Okay. So then so, if at the end of June, if I want to, um, you know, apply for this credit again, then I would look at my 2019 second quarter. My correct. 21 second quarter and as long as there's a reduction of 20 percent then i'm i'm hopefully eligible well yeah if you could do that 20 percent you're definitely eligible okay if, where it comes into question is if you're saying i didn't hit the 20 percent but you're saying but you were still you know you were still impaired because you know where you work the you know you couldn't have work if there's a, gov a government mandate that said you couldn't you know they had reduced the capacity of your facility your restaurant could only operate instead of normally having 200 people in the restaurant you could only have 125 and the government had told you that and you, you, you know, so there you could say well I still was impaired by that even though I didn't meet the threshold of the 20 percent revenue the issue, though, is, you know, so so that would probably like apply in the second quarter for New York. 
because they have just now recently started opening up fully. So places like New York, Michigan, California have still government imposed shutdowns at partial or, or full shutdowns of entities. So you didn't have a partial that counts. I'm just not seeing, you're going to be challenged to do that here in this, in, in Jacksonville, unless there might be, you know, circumstances. That's why you really need to, to look at the, um, you know, the revenue fault is going to be your, but that's cut and dry. It doesn't matter what happens. And you can say the, the revenue's down 20%, you're cool. You know, in, um, Remember though, back in 2020, it was a 50% revenue reduction. Right. So 2020 comes even more, you know, you have even a, a harder hurdle there, but you were also really hammered down at that point. So I, I don't think to have a, you know, they wanted it to only go to certain people, but then, you know, like I said, we still got the PPP loan in there playing around, so. Okay, now for the, um, so for 2021, it's a $7,000 credit for $10,000 worth of payroll. So that's an aggregate of, of payroll, not just one person, correct? No, that's that's per person. So let's say you have four employees and you pay, one is paid 40,000 a year, so that's 10,000 a quarter. Okay. You can get a $7,000 credit for them. Let's say all the other conditions apply. And we won't add the health insurance, but that is another feature that if you paid a thousand dollars in health insurance. So if I have an employee that makes 10 K you maxed out, let's talk about the employee that makes 5,000. They make 20,000 a year. They make 5,000 this quarter. You'd say, okay, I'm 70% of the 5,000. That's 3,500. Well, I also pay 500 of their health insurance. You know, they pay 500, you pay 500. Well, now you really don't have just 3,500, you have 4,000. No, it'd be 70% of the 500, right, uh, okay. Jessica? Yes. Yes, okay. So the credit, Nancy, is 70% of the allotted amount, which is $10,000 per okay. employee per right, But quarter. it maxes at 10, but not, you know, some people, if you have full-time employees and depends on the nature, you're gonna max it out at 10 every time gotcha. you know businesses though that have part-time you have a lot of people and, and you know they're uh, like you know they're they're part-time it's really just a wage function a wage plus the health insurance cost and then you get 70 percent so um you know sometimes you know if, if you had a restaurant you, you could also have a whole bunch of people that aren't you, you may take them you know you'll never get to you know if they're part-time they're not making that kind of money um you know, you're going to have much less. So not every employee is going to be eligible. Usually, though, you know, you know, once again, when people are throwing it out, full-time employees, and you're paying them most of the time forty thousand, you're going to have that covered. So you're going to max out at the ten thousand in wages or health insurance paid by the employer pretty easily every quarter. And you can't carry the credit over. Is that correct? When you say carry the credit over. I mean, well, I, I think it was yeah. just, uh, it might have been, I can't remember which one of you had said this, that you need to, um, aside from going back into 2020 and amending returns, but in the current state, if you get the credit that you're taking, you need to take it in that quarter or the next quarter versus being able to carry it over to, say, next year. Well, the credit would be continuously being carried forward because you're making payroll deposits based on the employer's social security tax, the match by the employee of social security tax, social security, Medicare, and then also the taxes that the employee has withheld for income tax purposes, federal income tax purposes would not include state income tax. So, you know, when people, you know, so that's where that credit is applying against. In some circumstances, you know, the amount of taxes being withheld by the employees for federal income tax and then the 15.3% of Social Security slash Medicare tax, the credit is greater than that amount. So what happens is you end up with this, this credit and then you take it to the next, so they roll eventually 
you can just say, instead of having this credit, you could have the credit apply to future. So when this program stops, you're not paying payroll taxes when you get back to normal payroll taxes and you're not paying that. The other option is you say, if I get a credit, you can actually claim the refund from the Internal Revenue Service and they actually issue those refunds. I did have a client that, you know, we, we had completed their 941, they had a credit and instead of carrying it forward to subsequent quarters, they asked for the refund and they actually got a check from the Internal Revenue Service. Oh, wow. Well, that's interesting. Yes. So the answer is kind of twofold, as Adam just explained, that yes, you can carry the credit forward, but when you use a payroll company, that tax deposit has already been made. Therefore, you're going to get a refund from the IRS. There's not an option to carry it forward to the, to the next quarter with payroll companies. Right. Okay. You could probably do that if you were doing your own payroll or if somebody was doing your payroll for you manually. Um, but you'll get the refund if you're using a payroll company from the IRS directly. Gotcha. Well, it's certainly a complicated issue. And my advice to anybody who's listening to this, contact your CPA. <laughs> well, and payroll service provider sure. too. I yeah. think those are- And we, outsource your payroll. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. There, it's, and, and just have a little bit of caution. And, and I, like I said, I know, you know, to be sitting there, thinking that you know like i said 10 employees and you can get thirty three thousand dollars that just per employee that's that's an enticing and it's worth it i'm not discounting it but you know you may not don't have don't spend that three hundred and thirty thousand dollars on a new car thinking you're going to get all of that money uh you know from your 10 employees so don't spend it until you actually get it yeah i think that's excellent advice you know just in case <laughs> Yeah. Well, it appears that you guys have done such an amazing job that uh, we don't have any questions. Okay. Even though everybody's totally confused. I'm not sure, but um, I want to thank uh, thank Adam and Jessica so much for sharing your information. Um, let me switch screens. Um, I've put up your um, contact information here, um, so when people get the recording, they'll be able to. Um, you know, if they have questions, they'll be able to contact you both. So um, again, let me remind those of you in the audience that you will be getting an email with a link to the recording as well as um, an evaluation. So we appreciate you doing the evaluation. So again, Jessica, Adam, thank you so much for um, you. sharing your information. Okay. And those of you in attendance, Pleasure. thank you for joining us today. And um, without further ado, Enjoy the rest of your day. Okay.